For many centuries, scientists have pondered why the planets Venus and Mars bear many striking differences to our own planet and its habitability. The Earth, at a distance of one astronomical unit, is often described as being in the habitable zone, a distance not too close to the Sun, otherwise it would be far too hot, like Venus, and not too far from the Sun, otherwise it would be far too cold, like Mars. This is, in fact, a poor explanation, since there are many other factors determining a planet's temperature, which Mars and Venus demonstrate perfectly, overwhelmingly influenced by their atmospheres. Firstly, Venus is a victim of a runaway greenhouse effect, with a dense atmosphere of over 95% carbon dioxide, a potent greenhouse gas. The sun's heat is retained, generating an average temperature of 467 degrees Celsius, hot enough, as many will quote, to melt lead. Clouds in the upper atmosphere host many halogen compounds of chlorine and fluorine, and in addition, rain droplets of sulfuric acid make Venus altogether highly noxious. In addition, the atmospheric pressure is 90 times that of the Earth's at ground surface. The Earth's atmosphere is predominantly nitrogen, about 78%, and a further 21% or so is oxygen. The greenhouse effect is far from that of Venus's, with carbon dioxide comprising of less than 0.04%. With varying levels of water vapour and trace amounts of methane and nitrous oxides, the greenhouse effect is necessary to regulate Earth's temperature, which scientists believe could be up to 33 degrees Celsius colder on average. Life could still get by in the equatorial regions and would maybe pool in areas made warm by geothermal activity such as springs or mud volcanoes. Life has been proven to exist in many temperature extremes so even a lack of greenhouse gases might not necessarily make the earth totally barren. Life on the other hand would be far more likely to be single-celled protozoa. Ironically, Mars' atmosphere is comprised of 95% carbon dioxide. However, far from generating a strong greenhouse effect, its atmosphere is very thin, about 1% of that of the Earth, so altogether the opposite from Venus. Very little of the Sun's heat is retained by Mars' atmosphere. Thus, average temperatures on Mars are around minus 55, although in the polar regions, temperatures have varied from just above freezing with chilling minus 143. Unlike Earth, Mars has little or no magnetosphere, a magnetic field protecting it from fast moving charged particles of solar wind and radiation from the Sun. Thus, Mars' atmosphere has been eroded by the Sun, leaving it without much substance. Yet images show how Mars once had running water, since it was much warmer billions of years ago. So, perhaps if Venus had far less carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, temperatures would be much lower, and if Mars had a thicker atmosphere, it could retain more heat. With the right atmospheric conditions and protection from the Sun's harmful radiation, habitability, in terms of distance from the Sun, does not have to be contained to the Earth's exact position, but could, in theory, stretch to both Venus and Mars, given the right atmospheric conditions. This helps in understanding whether life is common in the universe. Venus is probably a lost cause, but as the Sun expands later into its life, the Earth will become too hot, and Mars once again will be warmer. Before this time, humans may even begin terraforming Mars, tinkering with its atmosphere to warm up the red planet.